come to repentance. This is Pastor Sean Hackett coming to you from Resurrected Apostolic Faith Ministry. And there's no message more important than this one, that you need to come to repentance. Repentance meaning that you're saying sorry to God for all in which you have done. Think about it. We are created to serve Him, to give Him the praise that is due to His unmatchless name. For some reason, we went away from that truth. We've gone from that foundation, but it's never too late. Stay tuned for this message entitled, Come to Repentance. To wake you up. This is from 2 Peter 3, verse 1 through 8. And it starts in verse 1 by saying, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. It's interesting that Peter starts out and, you know, he says in 8 even, and he talks about the ignorant. Don't be ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. And then as we go further up, it also talks about in verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. So this is something that should be daunting to you because... We're talking about the same people. The same people in which Peter is speaking to is the same people who were once saved. The people who came from darkness and was brought to the light. So what happened? What happened was a lot of times we lean to our own understanding. Understanding could come from science. It could come from math. It could just come from a new doctrine. There are many people out there who believe that they have to stir you up by bringing something new. Something that you couldn't understand before in the Bible. And it's not so much that you couldn't understand it, but they want to make it more interesting. The same way that you may want to explain the Bible to a child. And you may try to shorten it. But God has made the word of God that it could be effectual to any person, whether they be young or old. Think about Josiah. He was a king, young. When he heard about the word of God and the laws, the commandments, and how they strayed so greatly away from it, it quickened him to a point where he ripped his vesture or ripped his clothing. And he started to moan. He started to cry about it. He asked for repentance. So this is where the message starts to take shape. We need to come to that repentance. We need to come to God with a full mind and a full heart. He doesn't want the baggage of yesterday. He says, when you come to me, I already made way that you'll be cleaned up. As it says in another word, purge me with hyssop, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. You know, oftentimes God washes you again and again. And how does he wash you? By forgiving you. But if you don't believe that the repentance is there, then you're going to keep sinning the same sin. And that's why often we look back and we say, well, God, I've been by myself for all these years. But God says, it's about time you just wake up because I've been there with you from the very beginning. I said I will never leave you nor forsake you, which is why anyone who wants the word of God could find the word of God. Anyone who wants God, who wants to feel 
of his presence. Be in his presence. Live in his presence. You can find it. Okay, it says this is why Peter has to stir up your pure minds because oftentimes we take Christ and the simplicity of Christ, you know, meaning the love of God and the mercy and his grace. And we forget that he was a consuming fire about how he was on the top of Mount Horeb giving the commandments and how everyone was afraid. Even the very people that was led by him or was being, you know, in the wilderness, led by him in the wilderness. So we should remember these things because there's many people who are going to come in the last days and say, listen, come on, look outside. Yes, outside looks the same way as yesterday. But this they say because they don't want to believe in something greater than themselves. They want to find comfort, but they don't know that they're the servants of corruption. If you don't take hold of God's unchanging hand, you're in the midst of devils. You're going to believe everything that everyone says. Just because they have it backed up by science or math doesn't mean that it's true. All I mean by that is if God gave man the power to name everything, okay, then he's also given man the ability to discover things. But the whole point is there's nothing that we could discover. Everything has been created from the very beginning. God has given us the ability to name all of his creations. But we have leaned to our own understanding to a point where we're saying, you know what, there is no beginning to all of these creations. We are the ones, we are the founders, and we are able to replicate even the best things that God has done. But to that, I would say you need to wake up. Because you can't replicate the dew that we find on the grass every morning. You cannot replicate the joy that God would give you when he has come into your life. You cannot replicate the peace in which God has in store for you as long as you believe in his word. So it's time for us to wake up and be mindful of the words that were spoken of old and even manifested in the New Testament from the apostles. Don't lean to your own understanding thinking that the apostles were speaking to the people of Corinth and the people of Ephesians and that they're not speaking to us any longer. We need to wake up. It's about time you come to repentance and start seeking the things eternal. God's promise. This is from 2 Peter 3, verse 9 through 13. And it says in verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, I'm going to continue reading in 10. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God? wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So Peter reminds us once more, stirring up our minds about how we need to come to repentance. And this is not something that Peter just woke up one day and said, you know what, I think I should preach this. But this is something that he was moved to do because God is trying to explain to us how we're lacking the power of his forgiveness. The power of God comes in change. If you're not changing, then there's no power. It says in verse 9 that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Now, I know what you may be thinking about the promise that he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But he also promises that those who do not come to his light, who serve him, you know, as it says in James, those who are righteous has to do righteousness. If you are not found doing right, then you're going to be found in destruction. You're going to be found in the same way as in the son of perdition, where you just go ahead and you take life into your own hands 
and you die by evil travail. It says in continuing that God is not slack concerning his promise, but he's long suffering to us word, which means that God is waiting for you to wake up. He's waiting for you to acknowledge the promise and to start climbing up that mountain. This is not something that you could do in one day. This is not something where you wake up and give your life to God and that's it. But God says you have to rot the work that is due to you, which means that you have to bring forth the fruits, meat unto repentance. God doesn't just want you to come to Him. He wants you to have something. There's tools that you have, fruits in which you have. The same members in which you've been using in your body in order to do sin. He wants those members to be converted to the fullness of His truth. That now you can save another as well as yourself. The whole point to the story is, God doesn't want you to just sit idle when you come to Him. He wants you to get ready for the work. Because His promise, He's been waiting for so long for you to come to the fullness of His truth. Now, I know what you may be thinking. The fullness of the truth, that means that I'm perfect. But as long as you acknowledge Him, your mind and your conscience becomes purified. And if it's purified, that means that you are willing to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that you could have ever thought or asked to think. Because the power now reigns within you. So now, just understand Many people out there are going to think that they could get prepared for this. And what I mean by getting prepared is not by reading the Word of God, but by finding a safe place or maybe saving up your money. Or you, There's so many plans out there. But what we have to understand is that God says in His Word that all the works that are therein, which is in this world, the weapons, the safe places, the safe houses... All those things are going to be destroyed with one great noise. And God says, I'm going to come as a thief in the night. You know, many people believe that you're going to see God coming from the distance. Maybe he's in outer space and I'm going to see him coming towards me. That's not true. He just appears. Okay? He created all things. And... He's already given all of us chances that we could come to the fullness of His truth and His light. The people who are in the light are going to know and understand when He's coming. Even in that, we have to understand that we could go at any moment. When we look at the end of the world, the end of the world means of the end of life, right? So if we're there laboring, some are getting married, some are partying, some are doing a lot of things. There are many people dying every single day. Their end has come. The end of their world has come. But I don't want to go too far in that doctrine. Because there is going to be an end to the world where everyone is going to be judged. So if everyone is going to be judged, could you imagine... How we have to be that type of person that God told us we could be. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. In all manner of conversation and godliness. You see, Peter even takes into account that the people in which he's speaking to is already holy. Right? Because he says in 11, In all matter, um, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So he already considers that you should know better. Everyone knows better. Your conscience bear witness that you should know better. But don't be ignorant and say, well, I didn't know. I didn't understand that you were talking about all conversation. You have to walk in the light at all times. If God, think about it this way. If God wants to speak to you at any moment, you've got to be ready to be able to be spoken at any moment. You remember in the times of Horeb, they were afraid. Why? Because already they were leaning to their own understanding. They were caught doing things that they should not do. That's why they were afraid. Think about Adam and Eve. Why do you think that they were afraid? Because they were caught doing that they, something that they should not have done. So we are looking and hasting for that day of the Lord. Not so much that we're living in fear, but understanding that we have a lively hope. And if we have a lively hope, we have a reason to live. 
There's many people who want to interpret the way that we live in looking for the end as living in fear. No, you're living in fear when you're trying to save up money, when you're trying to, you know, put your money in stocks and bonds and trying to, you know, get gold and silver and certain things that may not depreciate over time. But we've learned that all these things do happen and they're vanity. When you are looking and hasting to the things of God, you are understanding that you have to reprove the flesh and come to the goodness, the fullness of God. There's no time to be worrying about everyone else. You need to focus on yourself and your family and who God has trusted you with. So according to this promise, we look for new heavens and new earth which dwelleth righteousness. Yeah, he said it. This place, this world doesn't have righteousness. If it did, then everyone would have followed everything that's right. But everyone is following after their own means, justifying their means by their own actions, which just means vanity in the end. Stay and hold on to God's promise. And soon enough, you'll realize you have nothing to lose, only things to gain, as long as you come to repentance and come to God. What should I do? This is 2 Peter 3, verse 14 through 16. In 14 it says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. So, even talking about this, you're looking, right? We, we were talking about it before, about God's promise. But now... That you are looking and you have been quickened and you said, you know what? You're absolutely right. I need to wake up. I need to do what God has told me to do. And I need to put away this evil from myself. And I need to start serving God wholeheartedly. I don't want to be fake. I don't want God to see me as fake either. I want to love him with the same love he gave to me. Peter says, that's great. So now that you understand the diligence in which you need in order to find him, make sure that you're being found of him without spot and blameless. Wow. So, this is not about making mistakes any longer, guys. When you sin, you have an advocate. We've already taken that into consideration in other topics that I've covered. But what he's going in and delving in even greatly in here is about how when you are looking for God so diligently, you don't sin because you're looking for him. It's kind of like when you're getting busy, like maybe you have a new job or maybe you're moving to a new place in your life and you don't have time to think about everyone around you. Things are taking shape in your life and you're just busy. So what Peter is saying here is if you get busy and trying to find the things that have to do with life, then you can have life and then have it more abundantly. He's not considering that you're going to sin. He's just looking at the fact that you better be found of him in peace. He is going to come. You know, many a times you are looking and you're saying, well, what should I do? And after you found out what you should do, you're asking yourself the question of, is God really going to come? Well, he says clearly, when he comes, he wants to be you. He wants to find you in peace. All God wants you to know is all his ways are of peace. When you're not holding on to the drama of this world, backbiting, talking behind people's back, being busybodies in other people's business, you know, then you could understand that you could have peace even if you're alone. You don't have to be married in order to have peace. Now, if you're married, I'm not saying that you're not going to have peace, okay? But all I'm trying to say for those who may feel that they're lacking, that help me, understand that you've always had someone with you, and that's Christ. In 15, I'll continue in reading, and it says, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they are unlearned and unstable, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Why this part 
should scare you is because there's a lot of people who understand the truth. Everyone understands the truth. But they've made up in their minds that they're not going to believe it. I mean, that's just scary. You're looking at God's, into God's face, into his truth, and saying, that's not true. Okay? These people are not meant to be around. These are people that want destruction. Okay? When you're looking at people who are, you know, telling and preaching about the word and professing that, hey, Paul wasn't speaking about you guys. You should dress any way that you want. God is going to accept you in all that you have. The, the, the tattoos, the lies, the adultery, the fornications. He created you to live in these things. Okay? That's not true. That's, those are people who are unlearned. And I know what you're thinking. These are people who may have gone to ministry school and studied to show themselves approved. That's by their standard. That's why Paul even says, I didn't get taught by anyone. I got taught by God. So the first person that you have to learn and teach this lesson to is to yourself. You got to acknowledge that God has already touched on so uh, subjects, excuse me, on how to speak, how to carry yourself, how to dress, how to walk, who to hang around. So there's no excuses. What should you do? You should come to repentance. Forget the old man. Forget your mistakes. Get up. Start living. And you'll soon start to realize that God is with you. And if God be with you, who could be against you? This is a mystery coming from 2 Peter 3, verse 17 through 18. It says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Him be glory, both now and and forever. Amen. So, in this mystery, the mystery was we touched a little, about, a little bit about it in the other one, um, what should I do? And it's just talking about how there's so many people out there who's professing godliness but denying the power. And again, power comes with change. Without change, you don't have the power. So people who are preaching that you don't need change and you don't need to come to the fullness and you don't need to be perfect and you don't need to watch what you speak and you don't need to hang out or you don't need to watch who you hang around. It's a lie. Okay? That's why Peter was speaking to these people because the same people who led away, they knew the truth. They acknowledged the truth. But they fell away from the truth. So don't fall from your own steadfastness, which means that when you are diligently seeking God, you could get tied up and say, well, okay, I'm good now. I have understand the peace. I understand the wrath of God. I understand that he's a consuming fire. But what you also have to understand is you're also living in the flesh. The flesh has to often be reproved. Don't have confidence in your flesh. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't be proud of yourself for all of what you're doing. But don't stop there. There's someone who needs you. Someone who needs prayer. Someone who needs to see you walking in the light at all times. And I know what you may be saying. Well, I'm not seeing that great sin any longer, Pastor Hackett. But what I'm trying to say here is those days that you're weeping and you're moaning, think about the strength. Someone needs to see you stronger. Someone needs to see you not committing the same sins any longer. I need you to wake up. Because there's too many people who's looking strong right now. But they're not even telling the truth, nor are they living by it. 
but we need to understand that we need to grow in grace. Grace interpreted in the Old Testament was favor. As long as you keep working diligently in this steadfastness, which is the Word of God, cleaning yourself up every single day, not so much that you're cleaning yourself up, but as you read the Word, it will clean you up because it's purifying your conscience. Then you will understand. That God's grace is there for you. And that you don't have to be reminded of the old man that you used to be. But understand that you now have the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if you have the knowledge of Him, you also have the power. And if you have the power of Him, you also have change. So that's why you have the glory, both now and forever. And that's how we could all agree and say amen. Don't listen to everyone that's on television. Just because they're on television, okay? Don't listen to everyone that's bringing to you some kind of word. God is speaking, even in the thunder, even in the wrath of the night. He's speaking through dreams and visions. Just wake up and listen and understand that it's about time you come to repentance. I'm not speaking about you who are going ahead and turning on the television and thinking that's the same thing as reading the word of God. I'm speaking about those who want to pick up the cross and come follow him today. God bless.